Hey folks, uh, Dave Parrish here at Knack Builders uh, doing another uh, video on some Knack functionality. Um, today's topic are 10 tips. Actually, part one. I'm just going to do five of them and I don't want the video to be too long and then I'll do another one with the other five. Now, I have a thing on my website, by the way, that a little PDF that you can enter your email and download these. These are pretty useful things. Uh, none of them are really rocket science. And each one of them I've probably addressed in uh, other videos I've done either in a whole and a lot of uh, deep dive type of stuff or as parts of other things. But um, each one of them is useful, so I thought I'd do a collection of them right in one video. And by the way, if you go to my website, there I am, uh, down at the bottom, 10 tips, you can add your name and email and and you'll get that. Or on a couple of the pages, you're going to end up with a with a light box popping in right there and saying, hey, let's do this. So I'll be back in a moment and I will uh, go through those. Thanks, guys. Bye. Okay, I'm back. Let's jump into these 10 tips or best practices or really whatever you want to call them. These are helpful things that you could often call upon to either improve some functionality or make things easy for you or just have a more uh, solid app. Here's the first one, auto increment date uh, created. I did a whole video on this as one of the most important things you can do, but you know, in almost every object or table, I don't care which one it is, I'm going to make one that's called date created. You set it to the current date. You can capture time if you want. And auto increment. You may use auto increment for for a specific reason used in the live app, uh, invoice number or, or whatever, a reference number. But this, uh, if I don't have one, something like that, an object, I'm still putting auto increment. And often it's just a behind the scenes field. But when you're troubleshooting the back end, um looking for issues with records when they were created uh, i mean depending on your plan you may be able to go see the history of it but you got to drive down and that can sort of be a pain uh this gives you when it was created which can narrow down searching for a problem really easy and it gives every single one of them you're sure that they have a unique id so if you're referencing someone, you're working with other people, you're going to say, hey, I need number, let's go check out number 55. You're not saying, oh, the one on this date, it's called this and that. No, you're going right to it. Uh, that can be very helpful. And then even further with that, if you're doing some more of the you know, slightly advanced uploads where you want to match records instead of just add to them, you're going to make sure you want a unique ID, and that's going to be helpful there. So... There's one of them. Next one, re-index hack. Um, I'm gonna, you may already know what I'm talking about, but if you create, let's say, a count function, I want this to count the number of line items for each order. Well, when you first create this, I'm gonna do it right here. I'm just gonna say count line item orders. There it is, count. If I go to the records, Go over here. That's blank. I don't know when NAC runs it. At some point, it's going to populate. But it's not right now. And you may need this because you're working on it and you don't want to wait around. Um, now I'm just going to get rid of that because this is a real app. But I can create, I don't even know if I have it in this one, but let's say I create a multiple choice. Um, I'm just going to call it, I'm going to put a star so I know it's behind the scenes. And I'm going to call it update. And I'm just going to put one option, update. It doesn't matter what these words are. My point is, I now have that field. If I go to records, do an update, Don't I don't need to qualify it, and tell it to make update, update, whatever word you want to use, run that update. What it does is goes through all the records and updates. Um, 
and I think it's what it's called re-indexing. It, it goes and forces it to do the things it does. And as a result, that field, after you run that, almost always is immediately populated. And other times, especially when you have objects with a whole lot of records in them, uh, you may want to set a task to run that daily. I just ran into this the other day. We had an aging thing. When something was entered and how long the first step in some process uh, changed. And they wanted to capture time. Um, and it wasn't updated. It would just sit there and not change. Day would go by, the value would remain the same. Um, so I made a task to run that similar thing every day. And... And that, that just worked. It forces it, if there's ever an issue, to update everything. So uh, that's a useful one, too. Let's see what we got next. Helpsite.com. This is a great one. Sometimes when you're, it has nothing to do with NAC, really, but sometimes when you're, you have an app, especially if you're deploying it out to a number of different users and they may not be in the same location and you want to get them, you know, you want to teach them how to use it. Now you could create a you know a Word document or a PDF and you know do something like that and it's really sort of a pain. Help site is a website. It's called helpsite.com and allows these things that are called um, I'm going to get one right here uh, knowledge bases. And here's one for an app we did, but they're interactive and you can. It's really easy to put in text. Just drag and drop images. You can put arrows that are pointed. Here's how you do this. Don't forget to do this. You can even drop in videos and show someone how to do something specifically. They can search. Uh, let's say delete. Any article with the word delete is going to pre-populate. So and it's really professional. And I've done it a bunch of times. And most of the time, I use the free version too. But there's other ones with higher levels of anything. But Check that out. It's, it's a really nice thing. Let's see what we got next here. Pop-ups. Uh, you're probably used to pop-ups, but I love them. Let's, let's do an example. I mean, I think the user experience using pop-ups is awesome. Um, this is as simple as this. Here, add order. Now, we're just grabbing a few pieces of information, and all they have to do is click Submit, and this is set to now return to the parent page. It's best if there's just a few pieces of information and you're not nesting pop-ups with other pop-ups with other pop-ups. That can get weird. Um, but when they press submit, it's just going to go right back here. It's also really good if you just need to know something a little bit about this. I don't know. It could be whatever. You have a detailed page. Instead of advancing to a whole other page, it can be a pain, um, it just pops it up right there and you see it quick. Now, let's... If this add order, if this wasn't a pop up, it would look like this. And we don't need all this white space for this, just to add this little bit. And then they have to navigate back or potentially. I, I just don't like it. I like pop ups. And by the way, real quick, if, if they haven't finished this and Meaning they haven't, they've filled out stuff but haven't clicked submit and they click off to the side, it's just going to go away. That's next default. It doesn't really bother me. For a lot of my clients, it does. There is a, uh, by the way, a piece of code right here. It's in NAC development docs, uh, which you can find. Just Google NAC development docs and you'll find end up finding this. Little tiny bit of code, you'd have to adjust where the scene is or apply it to the whole thing. Uh, and that will disable that. So if you click off of the side, uh, it won't get rid of this. So sometimes that's useful. Okay, now what do we got? Last one, full width setting. I don't know if this is a big deal to a lot of people. It is. I go to every app and make it full width setting. And I'm going to just give you an example of this. And I find a lot of clients like it too. This is full width setting. This, this may be subtle, but go to... Live app design. It's got these. And for the life of me, I can't figure out what either one of these means in terms of the words that are here. Full width on even really big monitors. Max width so they don't stretch too wide. Maybe I'm just obtuse, but 
regardless, if it's max width, let's save it. Go back here, refresh it so we get it. What it does, you got a scroll bar here, and it puts another scroll bar here. And I, I mean, again, this may be so. I know there's some apps, and I can't recall which ones there are, but this gets really, really annoying. You, you're trying to scroll up and down, and depending where this is, your cursor is, it's scrolling here, or you're inside and scrolling there. Um, this, I'm going to call it nested scrolling, can just make things awkward. Uh, rather, I set them all, almost all of them, to full width. Um, it doesn't do that. There's no, it just scrolling. One scrolling, you're not going back and forth. Um, I like it better. That's that. Okay, next time I'll do these other six. So hold on tight. Um, that's all I got. I appreciate it, folks. If you uh, if you like this, you know how to like it or ring the bell or subscribe to my channel. I appreciate it. Take care. Thanks.